Okay, so I just wanted to make this quick video to explain how you can take procedurally generated materials in Blender and export them as texture maps so they can be used in other software. For example, in Unity, if I tab over here, you can see how I've got this jug, I've exported the textures, so now I can use these as game props. And this basically replaces the need for the use of uh, texture painting software like Substance Painter. If you can create procedural materials in Blender that generate this kind of data for you, then you have no need to use the smart materials that are present in other softwares. Nor would you need to go to another website and buy a single texture, because if you can generate millions of variations from a procedural node, then what's the point in having just one? So for demonstration, taking a look at my node groups here, I've got the complex iron node from my modular metals pack, and I've taken my ambient grunge version 3. One side note is that the normal height output is not available in the current version, but I'll add that in the next one. I'm basically taking the color, roughness, and normal data. I'm passing this through a glossy BSDF, and we can see the result here. Now, if you wanted to transfer the look of this into another software, there are a few things to keep in mind. Because the shader you're using to view the object in Blender is not going to be exactly the same as shaders in other softwares. So we'd want to package up and transfer as much useful data as we can through the use of texture maps. But exactly what maps you use and what data you explore is entirely subjective and dependent on your workflow. So in the render settings here on the right, you can see that there's a bake section. This is where we'll actually be creating the textures. So I've got the UV editor open here on the left. The object has been mapped. You could either seam and unwrap this manually or do the smart UV project, but I'll also leave a link to Daniel Bystead's really excellent video on UV mapping in the description, because if you're new to it, that should be a good introduction. Create new images for all of the different maps you want to make in the image editor. So I've got the diffuse, normal, and roughness. Notice that I've already baked these out, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. Make sure you have your object with your generated material on it. As a side note, I've got all of the exported textures up here as well, so I can test them out quickly afterwards. Now, not every shader is appropriate for baking different maps. You could use an emission shader if you wanted to do diffuse because that would ignore all the extra lighting in the scene because it would be self-lit. But if we look down here in the bake settings, notice that I've got my bake type set to diffuse. That's because I want to get the color data first of all. Notice that you can also change the influence of direct and indirect lighting and color. I'm going to leave them as they are, but if you want to ignore like the bounce lighting, for example, then you can toggle that off. Glossy BSDF is not really an appropriate shader for baking out diffuse data, so I'm going to plug the diffuse one in. Notice how it's now just the color, we don't have the roughness or the normal. And then with the object selected, and of course with the diffuse selected in the image editor, I'm going to press bake. Notice in the bottom that it's going to start a progress bar. It may take a minute to start, and also depending on the complexity of your generated materials, this may take quite a long time. So I'm going to skip ahead to when this bake's done. Alright, so 99 and 100. See, it says baking map saved to internal image, save it externally or pack it. So you can now take the image. See here we've got image with the asterisk. Image, save or save as. It's going to be exactly the same data as I had before because I baked it the same way. But if you save it externally, you can take a look at the files and see that you have the diffuse map there. So we can then take that and transfer that into a game engine. Okay, so as for baking out other maps, like the roughness and normal, the glossy BSDF is an appropriate one for this. Again, you could just use an emission shader and pump out the masks and the maps through that so it would be unaffected by light. But I'm going to stick with the glossy shader for now because it's more appropriate for representing in the blender scene. Now, doing the diffuse has been easy, but if we go over here and do the bake type, we're going to set it down to roughness. We can also change in the image editor our map over to the roughness map. Now you'll see that there isn't really a target output for a specific map, which has always been a little bit confusing. So how does Blender know whether to export to the roughness or the normal or the diffuse or whatever? It's a little bit finicky, it's a bit weird. Blender's never been particularly clear about this, but if you make sure that the roughness map in the actual material is the actively selected one, then it should export appropriately. If this wasn't the case, then it may have picked the diffuse as the one to export to. So even if we had roughness selected in the image editor, I've had it before where it just swaps back over to diffuse and then overrides all that data. So it's a bit strange. I don't know why they don't have the option for having a single map there. But hey ho, that's just something to keep in mind. So roughness selected in the node editor, roughness selected down here, roughness in the type, object selected, appropriate shader, fake. Okay, and when that's done, notice that the image editor is still showing the roughness map. If we hadn't selected the roughness appropriately, then it would have flicked us over to the diffuse and we would have overwritten all that data. Also, you can see there's an asterisk by the image button indicating there have been changes made to the file, so we can save that again. Anyway, once you've got the roughness generated, you can do the normal as well. Just make sure you have a reference to the normal map selected in the nodes, then change it over to the normal in the image editor, then change the bake type from roughness to normal, and then just bake away. Skipping on ahead, I've come back into Unity where I've copied over the files into my Unity project. 
See that I have the diffuse normal and roughness files. I've made a material called the jug material and I've dragged them in here. So the diffuse goes into the albedo. The roughness I've put in the metallic. Again, this really depends on the setup and the workflow and the specific shaders you're targeting for in the software that you want to move the maps to. And then I've got the normal map. When you drag a normal map into a material in Unity, it will often ask you to change the settings for it to actually flag it up as a normal map because it will need to read the data differently. But once that's all done, you can apply the material to an object. So we can just drag the material on and you can see that because the UVs are there, it just works perfectly. So now we have an object that we can use in our game project. Now baking in Blender can be a bit tedious, but you do have a lot of flexibility and options in deciding what kind of data you want to export and to which maps. So if you're the kind of person that wants to have nicely textured objects but doesn't want to mess around with different softwares like Substance Painter, then procedural materials may be a viable way to go. So this should work with pretty much any procedural material in Blender that outputs color, roughness and or normal. But again, each of these is completely optional. Something that you won't be able to transfer is anything vector displacement related, because that requires some very specific rendering techniques. Remember, we're moving this data over from a path traced engine to a rasterization engine, so there will be limitations in visual style. And because baking textures from Blender is tedious, there are tools available that can help you with that. Though I haven't tried it yet, I have heard good things about Bake Wrangler, so that might be worth taking a look at, but I'm sure there are other alternatives available as well. Remember, you can pick up my modular metals or my Ambient Grunge package on Gumroad or Blender Market. Head over to my website to learn more if you're interested. So thanks for watching everyone, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.